Hello everyone, Ace here, and today I've decided to have yet another look at some video game history, and in the process answer the question, what exactly made Tex Murphy under a killing moon great? First released on Halloween Day of 1994 as the third entry of the Tex Murphy franchise, Under a Killing Moon was an absolutely revolutionary entry within that franchise, as well as within point-and-click games in general. It is a game that truly pushed the boundaries of what could be accomplished within the genre, and stood as a technical marvel from a genre that's not really all that well known for technical marvels. Which brings me quite nicely to the first thing that made Under a Killing Moon great. That being that this was a first person point and click adventure with complete freedom of movement. To understand what I mean, let's compare this game for a moment to another classic, most notably Myst, another first person point and click adventure game. However, unlike with Myst, where moving around on the map means getting onto a glorified roller coaster ride, the same is not actually true for Tex Murphy Under a Killing Moon. Instead, the player does in fact have the ability to walk or run around the map as they wish, in a manner less like a traditional point and click adventure game, and instead more closer to a traditional FPS. PS game. Except here, the player has the ability to duck down to be able to press buttons under desks and things like that. Because again, at its heart, Tex Murphy is still a point and click adventure. This naturally makes the game stand out very much so in comparison to other entries within the genre. But it does lead me to a second thing that helped make the game great. That being that this game was able to be full 3D with full player freedom while also being an FMV game. And yet it somehow works. Like I said, from a technical standpoint, in 1994 this was extremely impressive, though it's of course also a big part of the reason why the game took four years to develop and cost around two million dollars at the time, which was an extraordinarily high budget for a game in that era, as well as an extremely long development time. To put this to perspective, Ocarina of Time came out in 1998 and was notorious for having its three year development time. Now of course I know what you're thinking, FMV games are notorious for having some atrocious acting, but in the in the case of Tex Murphy Under a Killing Moon, that wasn't really the case. And that does bring me to another thing that helped make the game great. The casting. For what it's worth, I should mention right off the bat that lead game designer, as well as lead actor Chris Jones, has become the face of Tex Murphy for a very good reason. He's proven himself as being completely capable of pulling off the idiot savant private investigator that we all know and love. But that's not to say that the game didn't have some big names attached to it in terms terms of the acting cast, with the most notable and I would argue most inspired choice being none other than the legendary James Earl Jones being the literal voice of God. A role that I'm sure the late James Earl Jones was quite proud of, but also a role like I said that was absolutely inspired. Still, despite the genuine acting chops, FMV games do have a reputation for being a bit silly. That does however bring me to the next thing that helped make Under a Killing Moon great, the fact that this is a comedy game that deliberately plays into the silly nature of FMV games as well as point and click adventure games. It's genuinely surprising just how well comedy that was commonplace in the 30s and 40s translates into FMV game format. But here we are, and it is also surprisingly thematic given that this is a noir style game, even if it's more specifically a cyberpunk noir setting. But as I've also said, this game manages to poke fun at point and click adventure titles in general as well. One of the best examples being a door that's simply painted on a wall, with the setup being further added to by the fact that there is a set of stairs that leads up to that door, only to find again that it's just painted onto the wall. Taking all of this into consideration, Tex Murphy Under a Killing Moon was, at the end of the day, an absolutely revolutionary title from a technical standpoint that offered more player freedom than previous point-and-click adventure games, did so with some genuinely famous actors, and managed to be genuinely fun all wrapped up in one neat little package. With all of this in mind, this has been Ace, and I hope you'll agree when I say that Tex Murphy Under a Killing Moon is great.